aka Miss W.O.C. Reader and welcome and or welcome back to my channel. Sorry if you hear a little bit of noise. It is very humid today so I did have to turn on the fan because as you can see I'm already glistening. But I got this really cool idea with summer just around the corner that I should do a video recommending different vacation romances and like maybe throw like a little bit of women's fiction in there too. But I like to have at least 10 solid good recommendations for a video and as I was going through the ones that I have read in the past I'm just like I don't feel like I have 10 solid ones and then a couple like might be harder for you to get your hands on and I do want to get like always recommend books that are accessible. So there are a lot of books that I plan on reading over the next couple of months and it's just like by the time I finish reading them it's going to be fall especially at the rate I've been reading lately so I might as well just film it now and you guys can decide whether you want to read them or not I'm not necessarily recommending these I don't understand how people do recommendation videos and like they didn't read a book that they're recommending and they're just like 20 books I didn't read this I didn't read this I didn't read this which I know is like par for the course of the new booktube but that's just not how I roll. I don't want to recommend you anything that you're going to come back to me and be like, oh, that was the worst book ever, or that was so problematic. So these are just books that I plan on reading over the course of June through August. So let's get into it. Now, most of the ones that I do have on my list are ARCs or books that have been gifted to me by the publisher. And the first one that I'm starting with is Love Overboard. This is by Ada Barume. So it's being released through Avon UK. I don't know if it's going to be released through Avon US, but like I said, it's linked below. You can always get it from Amazon or your favorite bookseller. And this one intrigued me just because of the below deck comp. I mean, I'm not like a below deck watcher or anything like that. I've watched episodes I do find like the idea of working on a yacht fascinating especially because I did used to work in the hospitality industry and then life and my mind changed so I'm just gonna go ahead and read the description for you guys things on this yacht are about to get rocky when feisty chef Sophia and straight-laced first officer Jack are thrown together as the crew for a luxury yacht on the beautiful Amalfi Coast, it's anything but smooth sailing. And after their first interactions end with one very soggy first officer in an all-out battle over strawberries, they vow to give one another a wide berth for the remainder of the season. But even on a 154-foot yacht, space is tight, and try as they might, Sophia and Jack are thrown together time and time again. And when disaster strikes for their wealthiest guests, the pair are forced to put aside their rocky start for the good of the charter. As the tides begin to turn, Sophia and Jack discover that they might just have more in common than they first thought. And maybe, just maybe, Jack might be the starboard to Sophia's port. After all, the most skilled sailors know that when the waters don't run smooth, you simply need to chart a new Course. So that intrigues me. I'm really, really curious about it. I think it's going to be fun. I haven't read a book, I don't think ever, like set around the Amalfi Coast. I can just imagine the great visuals that are going to arise from it. And hopefully it's a good one and I will be able to report back to you soon because I'm trying to read that very soon. So this one right here is Sunny Hostin's Summer on Sag Harbor. Sag Harbor is in New York, in case people didn't know. And this is the continuation of her Summer on the Beach series. I did read book one, which was Summer on the Vineyard, which is set in Martha's Vineyard. And the interesting about, thing about this series is that it is set in various locations for wealthy black people in the U.S. to vacation. So I just thought that was pretty cool. It's like our kind of people type of vibes, giving you a peek into the drama of that like upper class society. 
And like I said, this is book two, so it even follows a character that we were already introduced to in book one, but she's one of like the main main focus. Olivia Jones, hardworking and accomplished, has against the odds blazed an enviable career path in the finance world. But behind the veneer of her success, she is mourning several devastating losses and betrayals. Untethered from her life in New York City, she moves to a summer home in the Hamptons. There, Olivia finds a close-knit community of African-American elites who escape New York City for the beautiful beaches of Sag Harbor. Since the 1950s, very few have known about this historically black beachfront community, and the residents like it that way. That is, until real estate developers discover the hidden gem. Now the residents must fight for the soul of this HBBC. As the summer stretches on, Olivia teams up with her new friends to protect their community, and in doing so, she discovers who she really is. Though not without cost, Olivia's search for her authentic identity and her fight to preserve her new black utopia will lead her to redefine the meaning of love, friendship, community, and family, and to restore her faith in herself and her chosen path. So it sounds like um, it's going to be like an older, like maybe like 30s-ish woman who is learning to find herself again, maybe like finding a break from work and just embracing her community, which are the types of stories that I do enjoy. Continuing on that series, I have this one by Sunny Hostin, and this one is Summer on Highland Beach. Highland Beach is in Maryland, and um, I was sent this one by the publisher. I don't know if it's out yet or if it's going to be out very soon. It says, founded in the late 1800s by the son of Frederick Douglass, Highland Beach along the Chesapeake Bay is the oldest black resort community in America. Inside this proud and secluded beach community of, of about 100 private homes is Olivia Jones' legacy. But Olivia's legacy comes from, comes with thorns intertwined are the secrets of her aunt's death, a controlling grandmother who is determined to crush anyone or anything that will interfere with her son's political career, and a father who wants to rebuild the family he rejected decades ago. In the midst of tense family drama, Olivia must decide if she wants to return to the beautiful life she's created in Sag Harbor with the neighbors and wonderful man who become central to her happiness, or finally achieve her dream of having a family and home to call in her own in Highland Beach. So it seems like we're going to be following Olivia again in this one and I was actually just looking at the end pages because I did not like open the book before and that's actually really cute. I love that. And I said it's just going to be heartfelt, very community heavy, probably going to have like a lot of drama which I'm ready for. Then I have Let the Games Begin. This one is by Rufaro Faith Mazarura and just knowing like it's like somewhat Olympic themed was enough to hook me especially black couple on the cover. You know I had to have it. So this one is set in Athens in 2024. Olivia Nakomo has always been ambitious, smart, and an overall go-getter. Now that she's graduated from university, she's willing to do whatever it takes to land her dream job at the Summer Games. The first step, securing her new internship, which will put her in the center of all the action, where she hopes to run into some of her favorite athletes. Ezekiel Zeke Moyo, the heartthrob star runner of Team Great Britain is more than ready to claim his title as the fastest man in the world, following in the footsteps of the greatest athletes of all time. His future to, fin to the finish line is looking bright, despite his recent breakup with celebrated gymnast Valentina Ross Rodriguez constantly making headlines. When Olivia and Zeke collide, literally on the first day of training, sparks fly. As the games grow closer, so do Olivia and Zeke. But the competitions are stirring up uncomfortable memories from Zeke's past, and Olivia's internship doesn't turn out to be what she expected. Will they be able to overcome these hurdles and achieve 
their dreams or will it come at the cost of their budding romance? So, like I said, I'm here for like the Olympic summer romance and I will be reporting back. I'm going to present to you until I met you which I will be reading very very soon because this is my beach book and this one is by Amber Rosegill but it's also written by Nadine Gonzalez she's not on the cover but I think like she's listed further inside um, Amber Rosegill is from Love Island fame in case you didn't know I don't really watch Love Island but I did watch that season for some reason I think that's back when I was trying Love Island <laughs> So I was like intrigued seeing that she wrote a book and then hearing that Nadine Gonzalez was involved. Like I've read Nadine Gonzalez for Harlequin, so I'm like, oh yeah, I'll check that out. And then it's set in Tobago, which is really what was like hooking me in. It was meant to be the holiday of a lifetime for Samantha, the launch of her travel blog, her best friend's wedding, and hopefully her own marriage proposal until she finds herself on the way to Tobago, single. Disillusioned with his corporate job on Wall Street, Roman is starting afresh in Tobago. He doesn't need a distraction, especially in the form of a free-spirited travel blogger, but something about Samantha intrigues him. As romance blossoms, Roman and Samantha must learn to risk their hearts, but when secrets are revealed, their new relationship is put in jeopardy. Now Samantha and Roman must decide what they really want. They came to Tobago to find themselves, but could finding each other be what they needed all along? I've had this one on my shelf for a minute, and like I said, um, Tobago is what like really was like the hook, line, and sinker for me. Um, I've read like books set in Trinidad and Tobago before, but they've been from the local perspective. So this is going to be more from like the tourist perspective. I don't know if Samantha is um, like um, from the diaspora or not. I know Amber Rosegill, her father is um, from Tobago. So she's definitely been there. She knows like the vibes. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna have like all the fun touristy things you do while there. I know the last time I went to Tobago, like five, no, six years at this point, we had so much fun. I was doing a lot of different things and I kind of expect to see some of them in this book. And overall, I'm excited. I think it's just gonna be a nice, fun, like fluffy beach read. So that is my stack. I have quite a few that I need to get to and I hope you guys will follow me along as I read them this summer. If you like this video make sure and hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!